everyone, I wanted to show you a real quick demo on uh, Metashape Pro. So this is a product I've been using for quite a while. It's uh, Agisoft. There's probably about five or ten really good uh, photogrammetry tools out there also. Um, but this one has a 30-day trial and I'm not sure if uh, it'll allow you to export out um, as OBJ. Uh, it may have uh, a watermark or something like that. So, but I, I wanted to show you uh, the processes that we're doing to make this cricket. Um, so you can make any object out of this, uh, just as long as it's not shiny, uh, reflective like a car windshield or um, really dark black objects. It really has a hard time. So if you have like a, like I'm looking over here at a light stand here in Senior Studio, uh, it's black, it probably won't work um, just to, and sometimes you can dust it with maybe like some, some uh, cornstarch or something like that, it may work. But typically if it's black, um, it has a hard time. So anyways, I want to show you really quickly and I'm going to kind of do it in segments and then put it all in one video so you don't have to sit here and watch it uh, do the processing. Uh, basically, it's very simple. Uh, we're going to add uh, a folder. You can add photos one at a time, uh, but we're going to do a folder and uh, this is on the uh, canvas on file. I put all the TIFFs up there. So I'm opening up a whole entire uh, folder of 110 uh, images. And we're gonna do a single camera. It's not, not a dynamic scene. It's all shot from one camera and it's basically on a Lazy Susan uh, done over at the library. So we're gonna hit okie dokie. And uh, we have information here, 110 cameras, uh, 100, 110 images, I don't know why it says cameras. And then we just, uh, it's easy as this, and then we're just going to, to align, and basically you're just going to go into this workflow. Uh, we're just going to set it up as high, and it's going to do, uh, it's magic. And so what it's doing is doing an algorithm and figure out uh, where all those image planes are on uh, when it was just taking photographs and so it's looking at each photo and kind of stitching them together and aligning up those photos so it makes this really uh, generic point cloud. All right, so I'm going to stop it here and like I said, I'm going to kind of uh, put uh, several of these videos together uh, into one so you can see the process. So you can see it's about going to be about a minute maybe and I always uh, double this to probably about two or three minutes. All right, so this is the next video, and, and uh, it did say some of the photos failed to align. Uh, so uh, we can talk about that a little bit later. Sometimes uh, on the Lazy Susan, um, I put a little bit of a graph on the very bottom, so it, it has a better time uh, aligning it. So it's a, a matrix on the bottom of the Lazy Susan. It looks like a whole bunch of dots and so forth, and it helps to, with the camera to figure this out. But anyways, this is just kind of get you guys uh, interested in, in how to do this. And again, you can kind of see with those planes, those blue planes, that's kind of the angle in which uh, the person uh, took the photos. And you can see uh, there's a lot. So they took almost four or five different layers. And again, they flipped it upside down using uh, the needle. And uh, don't have, I'm not using my, uh, mouse, maybe I should put my mouse in here, but you can kind of see uh, the cricket really loose point cloud right now. And so we haven't created a hard mesh here, but again, this is just showing uh, how all those photos were stitched together. So it's a pretty amazing uh, algorithm. This has been around for about 15, 16 years, uh, photogrammetry, so it's nothing new, but the processes are getting better and better. So you can take a drone uh, and fly it around and use that video and sequence it out using uh, a sequencer and After Effects and create meshes uh, with uh, drones. And also you can just use a regular uh, cell uh, phone and do some amazing uh, models. All right, so next what we're gonna do is go to workflow and we're gonna build a dense cloud and hopefully we can build a uh, mesh and also uh, build texture. So again, this is a 30-day trial, so we probably won't be able to do these last two. But anyways, you get the idea. And again, in, in our uh, lab, I think we have several uh, Agilesoft licenses sitting around. So if you want to come in 
you can set this up for overnight and let it uh, create this and uh, create your meshes uh, that you want. So we do have some licenses. So uh, we're doing a medium right now, but like I said, if you're going into uh, our uh, lab, I would go ultra high, sometimes ultra high, maybe an overkill, I would do high. For right now, I'm just gonna do a, a, a medium just so you can get a taste of it. And we'll go ahead and hit okay. And again, it's gonna do its processing and I'm gonna stop this video because it may take a little bit longer. I don't want you to have to sit here and watch it. Going through and I did pull up my uh, mouse and uh, basically uh, middle mouse will kind of oscillate and then uh, left mouse uh, to rotate. So it has kind of similar features to Maya and you can see uh, we're up to about 14,000 or no, 27,000 points. Um, and I don't think it's showing all of them right now, uh, but you can see the, it's a little bit denser than it was before. Maybe it's not showing at all. And so we're just gonna keep going. And so we did, a, we did build a dense cloud and now we're gonna go build a mesh. All right, so again, if you're gonna do this in the lab, just go really high on uh, the numbers, uh, arbitrary, I think uh, just leave kind of everything probably the same uh, default, I mean. And so uh, just you're just going through the workflow is pretty almost simple. Almost anyone can do this. Uh, you're just going down the workflow. So sometimes you may have issues with this um, and it's due to that matrix. And hopefully I can find that matrix really quickly and show you what it looks like as basically a circle and you can print it out and put it on your Lazy Susan. And if you don't know what a Lazy Susan, it's one of those things that you put uh, in a corner where you can spin around. Uh, it's usually in a kitchen and you can usually put your sugar or, or cups and you can spin it around and get around. And you can you'd, you'd typically get them at Bed Bath & Beyond for like seven or 10 bucks. Uh, really good investment. All right, so you can start to see our mesh is looking pretty good. Wow, I was hoping I was gonna stop that. All right, and then we're just going to go ahead and again, this is a very low res and I'm sure the one that we have uh, was probably baked overnight. So we've got a lot of missing data here. So not, not the best model, but again, it, uh, for what we were doing where we were uh, kind of just using as a reference to model, we were modeling on top of it, this would probably work for us. Uh, but you can see pretty good data there. Um, I'm impressed, uh, you know, basically 10 minutes of this. All right, so we're just gonna keep going on our workflow and we're gonna build a texture. And just use, uh, this is set to 4K, I think that's all right. And you don't want multiples, uh, you just want one texture. And it's gonna go pretty quickly. just want to stop the movie, but I'm just going to hang here if it's only for 15 more seconds. It's going pretty quick. All right, and then after that, you just export it out, and I'll show you how to bring that to uh, Maya really quickly. All right. Almost done. Almost hit the stop button, but it is it is progressing. All right, I'm gonna stop the video. We have built a texture, we've built a mesh, and you can see it's kind of crazy. We've got some weird artifacts in here. That's fine, who cares? Uh, we've got pretty good uh, model and this was on the lowest end. So if you cranked it up to high, I'm sure you would get some better results, obviously, because the library got some beautiful stuff that we are working on. So uh, so we build uh, the tile model, we built the texture. And so uh, basically you want to export this out. And this is probably where we're gonna get stuck. Uh, let's see if we can export. Let's see if it has an export. Export, export points, export model. Now let's see if this works. All right, grass, hopper, test, 
All right, I'm gonna go to uh, my desktop, Grasshopper, and Photogrammetry. I probably misspelled that, I don't care. Hit create, and I'm gonna save this as a test, and it, save it out as an OBJ. Save, vertex color export uh, texture, make sure that's on it, and make sure it's a JPEG, that's great. Um, I'll go ahead and hit OK. I don't see the OBJ thing. All right, excellent. So I'm, now I'm going to open up, uh, not Mudbox, but Maya. OK. And I'm going to import that object that we just made. And let's see how, let's see how, see how bad it, it is. It could be horrible. Every time I open up Maya, it's really slow on my end. Hopefully it's a little bit quicker on your end, especially if you have a PC. Uh, Maya works a little bit more efficient on the PC side, I find. I don't know, you could debate that. Um, so we're gonna go in here, uh, we're gonna go to my photogrammetry, and we have my OBJ. All right, it comes up tiny. I'm gonna hit uh, W. I'm also gonna go uh, modify center pivot all right, I'm gonna hit F, and we can start to see um, what this looks like. And again, we can clean this up. We can go to uh, faces, and you can do a marquee, and uh, hit backspace, or delete, whatever. And so these flanges, a whole bunch of nothing here. Sometimes this can cause it to crash for some reason. All right, and so if I go to object mode, you'll see it's already UV mapped. So if I go to UV, UV editor, you can kind of see how uh, Agisoft does its UV uh, editing. All right, you can kind of see these fissure lines. It's kind of interesting too. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tell, uh, we're gonna go and put a texture on here. So we're gonna go to our uh, attribute editor and I go all the way up to my color and I'm gonna to go to my test. It looks like it was already on there, sorry. Hit open. And you can see it's just black and white right now. So if I, you know, I accidentally hit the stop button uh, on my computer. But anyways, uh, you know about four wireframe, five is solid, and then six uh, will show uh, the texture on there. So anyways, that looks pretty amazing. Um, I'm gonna say I'm pretty, uh, blown away with uh, what we have here, okay? Again, that was less than a half hour's worth of work, probably about a good hour's worth of work on uh, the photos and then exporting them out from the camera and all that, but uh, again, pretty cool for a quick um, photogrammetry. Again, if you're wanting to build this up in a scene, this is the best way to kind of start it having some real data to work on versus uh, front side or ortho images to model. All right, I'm gonna stop here, but I did wanna share with that with you this process. And there's no watermarks, and you can use this for 30 days, okay? And I think uh, Adresoft may have a really good price uh, point. I don't know if they do uh, uh, monthly subscriptions. All right, I'm gonna stop the video here. Good luck, and again, amazing product.